This is about to be a crazy video, my longest video yet for sure, because I'm gonna be breaking down my entire self-improvement journey. But starting from the beginning, back when I was a young, dusty, little scrubby kid, and I'm gonna be talking about all the main events that occurred in my life that led me to where I am today, which is sitting in this chair, speaking to you, and there were a lot of juicy moments. There will be some value along the way because of course you're gonna be able to learn from my mistakes. And you know what they say, wise men learn from other men's mistakes. And I hope that some of my stories will actually resonate with you and you can relate to them. That's the goal anyway, at least. And uh, we got the screen recording going so I might be looking this way a lot because I'm looking at a lot of the pictures that I took from my camera roll to help me tell the story of my life and break down my entire self-improvement journey. I hope the screen is actually recording. Last time I did this, I tried recording this yesterday and the screen recording failed. So if it does that again, I might just break this camera and you'll never see me on YouTube ever again. So let's hope it works, all right? Let's get into it. All right, so back when I was a youngin, this is like, I'm telling you, we're going all the way back to when I was a little kid and I'll skip through most of my childhood quick so that we can get to the juicy part of the video, but basically, I was a shy kid. Um, you can see this is my brother and me, and if you have a brother, you know that he's your best friend. Growing up, your brother is your best friend. You have so many adventures with him. Me and my brother had so many adventures, imagination, slaying dragons together, sword fights, lightsaber fights, just using our imaginations and having so much fun. And then the next day, we'd be enemies. Like, it was a constant... We were, we were best friends, and then the next day we were enemies because we just like would fight all the time, and that's that's typical brother shit. He's only two and a half years younger than me, so we grew up together, and it's nice not being an only child. I feel bad for you if you're an only child because growing up with another brother or sister in your life really helps you with certain values in life, like sharing, sharing toys with each other. But anyway, let's move on. My entire childhood was based around sports. I was an athlete from... The time I was like four years old, five years old, I got into sports. I played baseball, as you can see. I played basketball, as you can see. And that was my life. I cared so much about sports and nothing else, really. I was very competitive from the start. Even as a little kid, I, got, I had that competitive edge and that competitive fire and drive to crush my opponent. Man, you can see how little I was, though. This was me, I think, in like seventh or eighth grade. So I'm like 13 years old, 12, 13 years old in that. And I'm one of the smallest guys around. In my class, I'm one of the smallest guys. Look at this shit, like, bro, I was tiny. My legs look like sticks, my arms are sticks. It's crazy that I was actually like pretty, I was pretty good at basketball, I was, because I had like the skills, I could dribble, I could pass, I could shoot, I could do it all, but I just, the only thing holding me back was I was so little. Like, bro, look at this. I'm all the way on the right, okay? And everybody on this team was like a head taller than me. That's how little I was. I felt so out of place, but the best thing about this team was that I got so much better because I was playing against kids that were way better than me. Way better. And it motivated me. I had this chip on my shoulder all throughout like my basketball career with, with was like, okay, I'm tiny, but I'm still gonna be just as good as you. I don't care if you're bigger than me. I don't care if you're stronger than me. I'm still gonna whoop your ass. That was like kind of my mindset. And now this is eighth grade graduation, so Bro, I was five foot two. Like, I'm talking, I was a very late bloomer. There were kids I knew in my class in eighth grade who were like six feet tall. I was five foot two, I was tiny. There were kids who were six feet tall, they had facial hair coming in. I'm 24 now and I can barely grow facial hair. Like, late bloomer is an understatement. You know what, funny story about this kid right here, 13 year old me, 12 year old me, 12 year old me, he discovered porn. That's the kid that discovered porn. I remember I had a friend, my best friend in eighth grade actually, and he was one of those monsters who was like six feet, he was a man child. Probably hit puberty in like second grade. Hairy ass legs, hairy armpits, like my dumb ass barely had pubic hair at that point. Barely had, I barely had hair on my nuts. And I remember this kid, he wasn't a kid, he was like a man and we were best friends. It was funny, cause like he was up here, I'm down here. The dynamic was just weird, but we got along, we played sports together, we hung out a lot, and I remember going over to his house one day after school, and he opened up his laptop, and guess what was on there? Porn. <laughs> 
like in my eyes immediately was like i was in shock i'm like what is that i was like what the hell is that like called him out on it and he he was like what you don't know you don't watch porn you don't jerk off and you know what it is what it is but that's crazy that at, at 12 years old this little kid right here discovered porn like oh crazy I, I still can't believe it but nowadays kids are finding it like nine years old eight years old i'm hearing that's fucked up to me that is so fucked up moving on we're in high school now this is my first year of high school and basketball is my life i don't care about school at all like the only thing that mattered to me was sports and well obviously other things as well like i was wanking it all the time when you first discover porn it's like oh my gosh, and you do it every day, and it's like the best feeling in the world, and you can't get enough of it, yeah. But it's like it didn't really hinder me that much because I was I was a young kid, and it didn't like occur to me that what I was doing was wrong. Like I thought jerking off was normal, as do you probably. Like everyone normalizes it nowadays, so when you get into it when you're a little kid, you don't see the harm in it. You don't see the harm in it. But anyway, we'll get back to the whole P-Hub topic later in the video, but... Basically, this is my life and I remember trying out for the team thinking that I was gonna make we had three teams We had a freshman team a JV team and a varsity team and I remember trying out thinking I was gonna make the JV team No, they put me on they put me on the freshman team because I was too little. I was too little So that is when my whole chip on my shoulder started. It was like, okay <clears throat> Everyone's gonna doubt me Fuck them. I'm gonna prove them wrong. I've always had that mindset from the time I was 14 years old 13 years old, it was, I'm going to prove you wrong. All the people that doubt me, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to prove them wrong. And that mindset has served me so well in my life. Even with this YouTube channel, I've ha I have doubters. I have plenty of doubters. You're always going to have doubters in life. But guess what? Your belief has to be stronger than that. You need to believe in yourself to the point where you don't give a fuck what they say. You're going to make it work one way or another. Who cares? And that's kind of what happened. Like, moving on here, I, I broke my arm literally the last day of freshman year. I'm over at my friend's house, and we're all playing uh, tackle football. Meanwhile, I'm this little kid. Like, look at look how big I am. I'm tiny. And I have the ball, and I'm running away from him. And all of a sudden, the guy comes up behind me, tackles me to the ground. I put my arm down to, like, to like support my fall, which you're not supposed to do in football. But, hey... I wasn't a football player. I was a basketball player, so I didn't know. And snap, my arm snapped. And it sucked because that summer I was going to practice and get so much better at basketball so the next year I could like maybe make varsity or make JV. And I remember breaking down crying because it wasn't really about the fact that, oh, I have a broken arm. It was about the fact that I couldn't play basketball. It was about the fact that I wouldn't be able to train for months while I heal this stupid broken arm. But you know what? I'm so proud of my younger self because guess what? Oh, jeez. Flex on him, younger me. Flex on him. That's crazy. You can like see my shirt. Like my arms are tiny. I was a tiny, tiny kid. And this was me in, this was me end of freshman year. So I'm like 14 years old, 15 years old, just very small, very small. And you know what? Look at this kid. He's grinding. He's grinding with a broken arm. I'm out here playing, and I use that summer as motivation to prove people wrong. I don't care that my arm's broken. I'm still going to get the work in. This is I, I had this discipline even when I was a kid. Somewhere along the way, you'll find out later, I lost all this discipline. And, But like back then, bro, I was, I was hungry. I had this drive to be good. I had this drive to be better. Just putting in the work. This is after my broken arm. This is actually after my junior year of, of high school when I didn't play at all. I barely played on the basketball team. I was a 20-20 guy. I'd go in for the last 30 seconds of the game if we were up by 20 or down by 20. So my first three years of high school, I made the freshman team then the JV team and then I made varsity my junior year because I was pretty skilled as you can see. Like I'm, I'm doing all this crazy shit. And I didn't play though, but guess what? I was gonna prove people wrong, and so I did. This whole summer, the whole summer between junior and senior year, I worked relentlessly, 
And I even have this bracelet that I still have to this day from senior year. I hope you can see this. It says, keep doubting me. This is what fueled me. I'd wear this to school. This is what fueled me. And all summer, I wanted to prove people wrong. I wanted to come back my senior year and be the guy. Be the guy who played and was a starter. And so I relentlessly worked. This is the blacktop at my house. The, the basketball court, you can see the, the hoop up in the top left corner. And this is my guy Prince right here. He's like a second brother to me. Like this guy pushed me so much to be a better player, to be a better person. Even to this day, we still catch up. He lives in a different state now, but whenever he's home, we see each other and it's a beautiful experience and we always share awesome conversations together. But anyway, he pushed me to be the best version of myself. Oh gosh, this picture is so cringy. So all through that summer, I was playing basketball like two hours plus a day grinding so that I could be the starter the next year. And this is back when I actually cared about Instagram. Like nowadays, fuck social media. I don't have any social media besides YouTube, obviously. Don't be a dumbass. But this was back when Instagram was cool, even though it was never cool. But I was on Instagram and I cared about what people thought of me. Of course, all through high school, I was this kind of shy guy. Like I had a group of friends and I that I could open up to and I was close with and they were my boys but then other than that it's like I was not the popular kid I was not that cool guy who like everyone talked to and, and knew about no I was the guy that was like in my head overthinking certain things all the time kind of like I always grew up with this like underlying social anxiety type where it was like I didn't feel like I could be myself the only place I felt like I had full confidence was on the basketball court. Other than that, I'm seeking other people's validation. I didn't have that self-confidence. Maybe that's normal in high school, it probably is. But anyway, this picture here, I remember hitting up my boy Prince and saying, oh, and you can see the black bracelet on my wrist. You can see it right there. Keep doubting me. I had that on and I, was, I told you, I was wearing that every day, every day as a reminder. And I hit up my boy Prince, I'm like, Yo, do you want to go try to take some cool pictures for Instagram? Because it's like, I'm going into my senior year now and I'm trying to have like a cool picture on my Instagram so people can think I'm I'm this cool guy. And we and we did. We went, went around town and that's the picture we settled on and I decided to post it. I'm over here like, like what am I doing? I got my arms crossed like, wh like dude, what are you doing? What? <laughs> so cringy the fact that I needed to post that for other people's opinions like what the fuck dude what the fuck moving on this is my senior picture so yeah that's what I looked like at 17 years old had a high-pitched voice barely had any hair on my legs and shit and people would make fun of me for it oh do you shave your legs Matt like shut the fuck up bro and uh, yeah so then this is a picture back when my home gym wasn't as nice I'm not gonna lie, that's probably the only picture you could find of me in that home gym back in high school. I would barely go down there. I would lift like maybe once a month. All I was focused on was playing sports. I didn't really care about lifting back then, which in hindsight, I should have because it would have made me a better player had I gone down there. But anyway, here we are. It's the basketball season, the moment I've been waiting for. I'm the starter. I proved everybody wrong. I played pretty much every single minute of every single game and it was freaking amazing i'm not gonna lie to you like the fact that i this was my first experience with like putting in hard work consistently leading to the result that you want putting like my energy and my mind to something on a certain task and relentlessly chasing it that was the first time i was able to do that so it taught me that hard work gets you a long ways in this world gets you a long ways in this world belief and hard work gets you a long way and that was the first kind of experience I had with that like I wasn't this video game nerd in high school no I was an athlete I was an athlete but I wasn't that popular guy either no all I cared about was basketball I wasn't the guy that got all the girls and shit no all I did was get one girlfriend somehow and I'm gonna explain more about her later in the video but moving on this is my freaking favorite picture actually from that season like we're in the championship game we lost by the way we lost the championship but I'm in the championship game I'm passing the ball in. You can see, like, I had some muscle. Like, come on now. I had some muscle. And 
the crowd behind me, like that's just such a sick picture in my opinion. I'm not trying to like boast right now, but come on, that's a sick picture. And now getting back to the girlfriend story. So as you can see, this is us at prom. Me and one of my best friends in high school and both of our dates. The reason my first relationship worked for a while was because basketball was my purpose. I had a purpose, I had a mission, and, and that came first. Like I'm talking before game days, no, nah, I wasn't hanging out with her because I needed my sleep, I needed my rest. And just that alone kept that like mysteriousness about me that that girl was into me. She was into me, she, she knew I had a purpose, she knew she wasn't the number one priority. And that's very important if you're trying to create that attraction and keep that polarity in a relationship. And back then I had no idea about relationship dynamics. Honestly, I was a nice guy. I was that kind of beta boy, like typical nice guy who would do anything for her. But during the basketball season, I had that as my, as my focus. So that's what kept the attraction. But then things just started to go downhill and you know what, with everything as well, because after the basketball season ended, this is where like probably my downfall actually started. And I got introduced to weed, partying, and all through high school, I was a goody two shoes, like nothing, none of that shit. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I, I was an innocent kid. I didn't care about partying, I didn't care about weed or doing any of that shit like most high schoolers do. But when the season was over, my mindset turned to, okay, um, yeah, let me try these things. Like I got that peer pressure from everybody and I gave in, of course. And I started smoking weed, as you can see. I mean, holy shit, that was probably one of the first times I ever got high and yeah, yeah, <laughs> stoned out of my mind. And this is the start of the downfall. But the thing was, it didn't immediately turn to like everyday use. It, it started out as like, okay, yeah, I have, a little fun here and there. I started drinking on weekends from time to time with my friends, you know, typical high school shit. The first time you drink, it's like, oh my God, this is so, this is so fun. You're like laughing and shit. Same with smoking. You're like giggling. Everything is hilarious, but it, it didn't consume me. I still had that desire to be good at basketball. I wanted to play at the next level. And I remember actually my senior year, there's all this pressure, right? There's this pressure to go to college so that you can graduate and get a good job and live up to either your parents' expectations or society's expectations and all that shit. And I remember thinking about what I'm gonna do after high school. I was like, what the fuck am I gonna do? And it got to the point where I had a lot of conversations with my dad, specifically my mom as well. And my main focus was basketball. So what we decided on was to send me to a boarding school which, is, which would be my fifth year of high school. I did a fifth year of high school called a postgraduate year because my goal was to, I had some interest from college coaches to play for them, but my goal was to get more interest from coaches and actually land a scholarship to go to college for free. So that was my goal. And that's why I decided to go to prep school, but we'll get into that later. So here's high school graduation. These are some of my best friends from high school. And uh, yeah, everything is, this is a happy moment. This is a very happy moment. If you're still in high school and, and you're not yet, and you haven't yet graduated, just embrace it, look forward to it. It's a great moment, it really is. And then we have our parties and partying kind of takes over my life a little bit. The whole summer after, after graduation was a big party, was a big like celebration and what is, what is this picture? Like, it's just a bunch of dudes. This is like some homo shit, honestly. That's, that's pretty fruity, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, and then it's like, yep, I'm smoking weed more. This is a funny ass picture. I'm, I remember I'm at a friend's house, right? This was, this was the summer after, after high school. So the summer leading up to when I go to prep school. And instead of training, like I should have been, well, I was still training, but instead of like, fully focusing my energy on training, getting ready for the next year, I was fucking around. I was smoking weed with, with my friends. And this picture was one of those nights where we were smoking, we were chilling, we were having fun. And I remember having a cupcake in my hand. I'm so stoned, right? I take a bite of it, swallow. Then I look at my friend. Then I look back at the cupcake, back at my friend. And I say, oh shit, I'm eating a cupcake. <laughs> 
Like, it's just the stupidest thing, right? And he took a picture with the quote. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Uh, I'm, I'm retarded. Anyway, more smoking all summer long. It was like our, our routine was we'd work our job because after high school, I actually did get a full-time job that summer to make some money for the upcoming school year because I'm going to be living away from home for the first time in my life. So I need some money, right? So I worked for my uncle as a office bitch, pretty much. He owned he owned a steel company, and I was the office bitch. I would print papers, staple papers, and do all that crap, answer the phone. But after work, my friends and I, we'd meet up, and we'd smoke weed. And instead of practicing and training for basketball, that's what I was doing instead. So, yeah. There's me, looking high as shit. And so, I forgot to mention, too, the summer after senior year of high school... My girlfriend at the time dumped me, broke my heart completely because in my mind, she was the one, she was the one I was going to have a family with. I'm having all these crazy thoughts like, oh yeah, we're going to get married, have all these kids and she's the one. I care about her so much. And like I said earlier, I had the attraction in the beginning because I was so focused on basketball, but once the season was over... My priorities shifted. She was number one on that list. She was my everything. Everything she wanted, I got everything. I did everything for her. And the, and the attraction and polarity in the relationship slowly, well, quickly diminished. And she started to resent me for it. She started to think, oh, this guy's needy. This guy's clingy. And I was. I was a needy little bitch. I wasn't the masculine pole. I was the feminine pole. She wore the pants. I'm not even going to fuck with you. She wore the pants. So she ended it with me. She didn't want to stay with me. We were about to go to different schools and like do this long distance shit. And I wanted to fully. I'm like, oh yeah, let's do long distance. I'll only be like an hour and a half from you. I can drive down to see you every weekend. Pussy. But back then, I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken. And this is when the weed escalated. This is when my, my addiction kind of began. Because I was in pain, bro. I was in so much pain. My heart hurt. I felt rejected. Getting rejected is the worst feeling in the world. Not Maybe not the worst feeling in the world, but one of. Having that pain of realizing that, oh shit, that person doesn't want me anymore. Rejection is a bitch. And so what I did is I masked that pain with weed. I indulged in weed. I indulged in porn. I indulged in instant gratification to fill that hole, to... to escape my reality to cope with my pain and so that whole summer leading up to going to this new school where I was going to be a fifth year senior where I was going to get better over that year so that I can get a scholarship the next year that whole summer before I was smoking weed and coping with my pain and it took me a long time to get over that girl like a long time because of the fact that I never faced my problem head on I never faced that pain I just masked it with weed. It hurt. It did. But that's the that was the wrong way to go about dealing with heartbreak. Because it made my mental health suffer so much. So much. And that was a rough summer for me. You can see in this picture, it's like, am I happy? I wasn't. I, I felt terrible every day. I'd, I'd sometimes cry. Literally, sometimes cry because I couldn't have her anymore. And I was trying to pretend like everything was okay. And every, I'd go from high to the from one high to the next high to the next high, just pretending like everything was okay. Now we're getting ready for the upcoming school year. And I have a cast on my hand. Because a couple days before I left for school, I happened to be training for basketball. I got serious finally and was like, you know what? It's time to lock in. It's time to get better. It's time to improve. And there was one of these workouts I was doing. I was just missing shots. Every shot I was taking, just missing. Clank, clank, clank. I couldn't fucking score to save my life. And back then, I had some anger issues. I really did. I had, like, these attitude problems where I wanted to be the best. But I was so hard on myself that if I had a bad game or a bad workout and things weren't going my way, I didn't know how to control my emotions. I didn't know how to have, like, this mental toughness to just bounce back focus on the next play. I didn't have that ability. And finally I snapped. I missed another shot. I fucking threw the ball across the gym and I punched the wall like straight up to boom. Broken pinky right away. It was like, oh, 
fuck, I knew right away I did something wrong. Broke my pinky. On my way to prep school, broke my pinky. I took the cast off in this picture, but this is me <laughs> looking like a scrub in my dorm room. The first ever dorm room I lived in was this room right here. First time being away from home, and you know what? It wasn't good. It wasn't good because I had built up these habits all summer long to get into smoking weed. I had bought myself a vape, so I was now vaping and I was addicted to nicotine. And my priorities started shifting very slowly away from basketball to more of this degenerate sort of lifestyle, this pleasure-filled lifestyle. And so, yeah, <laughs> I have a vape in my hand in this picture, by the way. It's not just me, like, pretending to suck dick or something. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm vaping. Met these guys in, in my dorm, and we bonded over the fact that we love to smoke weed. We bonded over the fact that we were addicted to vaping. And we became boys because that's what we, like this kid right here, great guy, he's a beauty, but don't talk to him anymore. But like, yeah, just degenerate stuff. Instead of focusing on leveling up, which I had no idea even how to improve myself back then. It was just, I was drifting through life. I was doing things for others' opinions, for the validation of others, smoking weed because everyone else is smoking weed, vaping because everyone else is vaping, when really I should have been focused on basketball. That was, my, that was my desire, to play at the next level, to get a scholarship so I wouldn't have to pay for college. But what am I doing? I'm sitting in my dorm room smoking weed and vaping like a fucking idiot. My parents dished out a lot of money to send me to this school and I pissed it away. I pissed it away. These are some boys that I met, same kid. It's like, everything about me was based on other people's opinions. Like, I remember this outfit I'm wearing. This is very weird, but I remember this outfit I'm wearing. I never wore flannels. I do now, because I actually genuinely like flannels in the wintertime. I mean, a nice flannel is, is pretty cozy, and it, and it looks good. But back then, I never had worn a flannel ever in my life. But I remember the guy next to me, he's wearing a flannel, right? And he's got, we're, we're literally wearing the same outfit, because I wanted to be like everyone else. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to have this cool outfit, I guess. And I remember he gave me this flannel and said, you should wear this. It looks good. And I don't know, bro. It's like, do you know what I'm talking about? Like validation from other people. If you're super seeking of that validation, you can never really find yourself. You're always living for other people. You're always living for other people's expectations. The fact that I even went to prep school in, in the first place was, was a mistake, honestly, because I had interest from college coaches, and deep down in my heart, I knew what school I wanted to go to. It was this small school in my state. The basketball coach really, really, really wanted me to go there, and that felt good, having a coach really want me to go there, but I didn't go because of the opinions of other people. Oh, that's not the best school. Oh, it's just a shitty small school. You can do better, but it's like, I knew deep down I wanted to go there, but I was living for the opinions of other people. And that's a very tragic spot to be in. But anyway, basketball season comes around and you can see like the competition is much better. There's some big boys out there. There are some big boys out there, but I'm not gonna lie to you, I struggled. I struggled mightily. Like I went from being the starter at my home school, at my hometown school, to being kind of like a bench player who barely, who played, but like I didn't score very much. And my confidence just started going like this. My confidence was going like this and every night I was smoking with my dorm buddies and instead of like getting good sleep, I'm ruining my sleep, doing all this shit. My confidence just starts to tank, it really does. And then this happens. And look at how stupid I look. I'm throwing up the one. Ooh, 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 look like a fucking retard. Bruh, exactly, bruh. We got caught smoking weed in the dorm, and that is very, very bad. Because if I had got caught again, I would have gotten kicked out of that school. So I was on like probation, and I had a, a major violation is what they called it. And I got drug tested for the rest of the year, actually. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And we had to go to counseling. 
We had to go to counseling. So that is where my priorities were at. I was, I thought it was funny. I thought it was a joke. I'm like, ah, this is hilarious. I have to go to counseling. Like, this is so funny. You know, the crazy thing is too, I actually almost did get kicked out because during one of those drug tests, guess what they found in my pee? Like I had to pee in a cup and they'd test my pee to find like if there was THC, which is what, what's in weed to see if I was still smoking. They found amphetamines in my pee because I forgot to mention this. I had started taking Adderall. I had, I had gotten prescribed Adderall. The first month I was at this school, I got prescribed Adderall because I was struggling to focus. And I wonder why. I wonder why. I didn't care about school. All I cared about was hanging with my dorm buddies and smoking weed and watching Netflix at night and beating my meat. So they prescribed me Adderall. The doctor recommended it. My teachers recommended it. So all through that year, I'm now like taking Adderall and my dorm buddies are like, I'm, I'm sharing it with my dorm buddies. We think it's so fun. Cause if you don't know what Adderall is, it's, it, well, it's an amphetamine. <laughs> There's amphetamines in it, which is the same compound that's in meth amphetamine. And it's a stimulant that helps you focus, right? It's for people who have ADHD, helps you focus. But there's a lot of negative effects to it. Like it made me profusely sweat, made my appetite go away. Like when I was on it, I couldn't really eat that much. And so all through that year, I'm now taking Adderall. I'm smoking weed. I'm addicted to nicotine. But when they caught me smoking weed for the first time, caught me and my dorm buddies, we had to stop smoking weed. But I didn't have to stop taking Adderall. But the problem was I never told the school that I was taking Adderall. I never told like the people in charge of the drug test that I was on Adderall. So they literally thought I was on meth or some shit when they found amphetamines in my piss. And I had to go meet with the principal, meet with all the, like the drug counselor. I was like this close to being thrown out of the school, but I had to like show like, no, here's my prescription. Like, and they got pissed at me because I was supposed to have it be regulated through the nurse's office. It was a whole shebang. I'm not going to lie to you, but. Thankfully, I didn't get kicked out. And uh, yeah, fast forward. This is one of those nights. This is one of those nights where I was on Adderall. I took so much Adderall the day before that I was still fucking awake at 2.21 in the morning when I had to get up at seven for school. I got a jewel in my hand. If you don't know what a jewel is, it's a nicotine, like vape, stinky, smelly, stupid shit. Same night, I'm still awake at five in the morning. I gotta be up in two hours and I never even, I'm pretty sure I pulled an all-nighter that night. Like. I'm just doing stupid shit. 60 milligrams of Adderall, that's a lot. My prescription was only 15, so I took four pills instead of one. Somehow made it to graduation. I remember my boys and I in that dorm, we were like counting down the days to graduation because for one, we were all weed fiends and we wanted to smoke weed again and we couldn't because we were getting drug tested, but made it to graduation. like. Finally, and this was my fifth year of high school. So I was so done with high school. I was so done with that bullshit and I just was ready to move on. I was ready to get on with my life and I was ready for my next chapter, which happened to be college. And another one of the decisions that I made, which was based on other people's opinions, I'm not gonna lie. You know that same school that wanted me the year before? They still wanted me to go and I deep down wanted to go there but I had applied to these better, more prestigious colleges because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to try to get into the best college you can. And so I went to that college instead, the one where it was more prestigious, the one where it was, oh, if you, if you get into this school, you have better grades. Oh, if you get into this school, people think you're smarter. People think you're better. Even though I didn't even want to go there, but I chose it anyway. Living for other people's opinions will never get you to a place of happiness because you know you know you're a fraud you know you're just not living to your true core desires it took me a long time to realize that it took me a long time so anyway this is my second time graduating high school it's a whole nother party for me it's a whole nother celebration there's me at graduation and like I said, it's a whole nother party. The guy next to me is about to be my roommate in college. He's, he chose the same school. We met each other at that, that fifth year of high school that I did. We met each other at that school and we were about to room together the next year. So we're partying together all summer. It's one of, it's like basketball was kind of behind me at this point. It was like, I, I lost interest for it. I lost my motivation and desire to be good. I lost that 
that dog mentality, that keep doubting me mentality and, and turn to just drugs and partying and, and bullshit, unfortunately. And gosh, I just look like a pussy in that picture. <laughs> um, where was I, man? Oh, fuck. Let me full screen this. I just checked to make sure the recording was still going and I didn't even, I, then I didn't even full screen it, retard. <sighs> so it was at the point where I didn't care about it anymore. My goal was to walk on to the basketball team at the college I was about to go to, but I didn't have any desire to do that anymore. I just wanted to to be a hermit. I was still low-key, like, sad over the rejection from that first girlfriend. Like, it took me a long time to get over it. And actually, the girl to my, girl to my left in this picture, I went to prom with her. She was like my girlfriend for like a couple months at that school but the whole time I was still thinking about my first girlfriend I didn't actually like that girl that much and it's kind of shitty of me to say that but like I really didn't because I was still thinking about the first girlfriend but anyway the whole summer before college I'm talking like it is a party it's one big party I'm like oh I gotta get ready for college and prepare for all the college parties so it's time to drink all my friends in this picture had already been to a year of college so I was like all hyped to see them that summer and like like get introduced to the party scene even more and go crazy and crazier and like you can see I'm skinny as fuck. I lost all the gains from when I was like a basketball player and on my shit and healthy and wasn't a weed head and wasn't drinking all the time. I lost all the gains that I, the little gains that I made and now I'm really skinny. I look high in that picture because I was. And then about a week before college, we go to a music festival. Look how stupid I look in my backwards hat. I just look like a stinky, smelly little fuck. <laughs> We're all fucked up and like off our asses in this picture. I'm like, I look just not even alive. It's a shame because I went from the athlete to the party, drug, stoner, depressed kid. And you know what? There are phases... There are phases to life, and I, if I didn't go through this phase, this party phase, I wouldn't be where I am today sharing this information with you. So, I'm grateful for it, but like I said, just it was one big party. It's 6.27 p.m., yup, I'm drinking. Oh, bottle of Hennessy in my hand, yup. Just one party after the next, that whole summer before college. It was like a roller coaster ride. I don't even remember these nights, because when you get drunk, you don't fucking remember shit. There were like a couple years of my life where like I'm trying to remember what exactly I was doing during this time of my life before college, but it's like I don't fully remember because I was smoking weed every day, killing my brain cells. I was drinking a couple nights a week. So everything is a blur. I, I wasted a couple years of my life. Literally. Yep. Smoking. Me holding the bong. Good night. Exactly. Good night. Good night again. Holy shit. Now this is a picture of us just partying again. I'm literally passed out drunk. Like, just not a good look. Not a good look. It's actually a funny picture, but like, <laughs> bro, that's not a good look. And now it is time to move in to my college dorm room. This is my roommate. What a beauty. Great guy. Lives in a totally different state now, so we don't really stay in touch anymore. But like, yeah, funny picture. <laughs> We're both just like, hey. <laughs> And then college is a party. And what am I wearing, bro? What am I wearing? I got blue shorts. I got a blue shirt. And is that a red shirt? Like, what the fuck am I wearing? I'm holding the beer like this, like a pussy. Just one big party. That's all I cared about when I got to college was, was the partying. I didn't actually care about the studying. And I didn't walk onto the basketball team because that, that dream had died. It was like not even a part of me anymore. I was just the partier. I was the stoner. Like, look at this kid. I was the stoner. And I'm not going to lie to you, all throughout this first year of college, my mental health kept getting worse and worse and worse. It was to the point where I couldn't be alone. Because when I was alone with my thoughts, I knew I was a piece of shit. I hated myself. But I'd mask those feelings with the weed, with a girl that I met, with my friends, my boys that were in the dorm room. But when I was alone, it was like... I couldn't be alone. I wanted to be with people all the time. I needed validation from others. I needed to be with them and so I could feel happy and feel something at least. Partying some more. 
I remember I posted this picture on Instagram because of the validation. It's like, oh yeah, look at me, I'm drunk. I'm at college now, guys. And like, I look like a little bitch. The girl has her arm around me like this because we were, we, uh, that was my friend, honestly. We weren't like, there was no sexual connection there at all. But like, anyway, I wanted to post it because like, oh yeah, look at me, guys. I'm with girls and I'm drinking. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm so cool. And yeah, this is me and my roommate, more partying. It was one big party at school. I barely passed my classes because of the fact that I was just a fucking degenerate the entire time. I barely passed. Those glasses are kind of cool though, aren't they? <laughs> so yeah, then there was this girl that I met in college and she was kind of the second girl that I ever like fell in love with. It was like my second love and I got very, very attached to her very, very quickly because remember my mental health was pretty shit. I was at the point where I had no self-confidence. I didn't really love myself at all. So I used her to fill that hole. She made me feel whole. She made me feel good. She was my source of happiness and I was a needy little boy when I was with her. There's honestly two dynamics. You have the father-daughter dynamic and it's not like actually, oh, that girl's my daughter. It's like, you know the dynamic between a father and a daughter? He's the masculine figure. The daughter respects him and looks up to him and loves him. And then there's the mother-son type of dynamic where the mother kind of rules the relationship. A mommy's boy. That's kind of what I was. Like, that girl was like the mother figure to me in a weird, weird way where she, she wore the pants. Again, I'm in another relationship where she wears the pants and I am using her as my source of happiness, everything. I'm trying to do everything for her, please her. I'm a, I'm a typical nice guy. The girl I was with was literally the only thing keeping me going. The only thing keeping me going. And then towards the end of the year, there was this moment, there was this night where everything changed. My whole life changed because of this moment. So I'm about to show you a video of myself blackout drunk. Looking like a fool, looking like a fool. And that was the start of the night that changed everything for me. So I want you to picture this. I woke up that morning, it was a Friday. I had one class that day. I wake up, I take my Adderall, cause I'm still taking Adderall. I get all focused and ready to go. I take a bong rip. So I have my morning smoke session. I go to class, I sit there, take my notes, even though I don't really give a fuck about what I'm learning. And since I'm on Adderall, I barely have an appetite. So I go to the dining hall after class. I try to eat something, but I barely really eat anything. And at that point, I'm pretty skinny. So I'm not very healthy. I'm a lightweight. I'm a lightweight. As in, when I started drinking that day, around 2 p.m., one beer, two beer, already feeling it after two beers. Then the third beer down, it's like 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We're getting ready to go out for that night. We're getting ready to go try and sleep with a girl and go to these house parties at my college. And what you're now seeing on screen is a picture that I found the next morning because I woke up that next morning without remembering what had happened. I got so blackout drunk that I forgot pretty much the entire night. I was pretty much blackout drunk before we even went out that night. I don't remember being in this room. I don't remember taking this video. I don't remember who I was with. I barely knew these kids. We were like, look at how stupid we look. A bunch of dudes standing around a table, drinking. And so this is the parking lot I ended up in. These are, I put the story together based on the pictures from my camera roll because I was so blackout drunk, I don't remember what happened. But let me, let me just show you these pictures, okay? Another picture, I'm in that random parking lot. I was wandering the campus, but I didn't, I, I, there was a demon taking over my body. I wasn't there. I wasn't home, but I was still functioning somehow. Like, if you've ever been blackout drunk, it's like, you wake up the next morning, you're like, how the fuck did I do what I did? People tell you that you were doing this. People tell you you were jumping off tables and, and throwing shit. And you're like, I don't remember doing that. It's scary. Alcohol is poison. It's fucking scary. But moving on, I wake up. I come to, and I'm in the hospital with a bloody thumb. Oh, and it gets worse. Not just a bloody thumb. Look at this. This is when I start to remember things that night. It's probably like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. at this point, and I'm starting to remember. 
I mean, I'm starting to like come to and realize, oh fuck, I'm in the hospital. There's some guy working on me. Like what is happening? This was after I got out of the hospital. This is, this was after he worked on my thumb and yeah, I'm outside waiting for my ride. It wasn't just my thumb. My whole leg had a gash in it. He stitched up my whole leg. He stitched up my thumb. I had to get 27 stitches in my leg. Look at that shit, bro. I still have a scar to this day on my leg from that night. And I don't even remember how I got the scar. I don't remember doing what I did. I just woke up in that hospital with a dude stitching up my leg. Think about how scary that is. Alcohol is no joke. More nasty pictures. This is my dorm room window. Shattered. So can you guess what I did? I was blackout drunk that night. I made it back to my dorm room and I think I put my foot through the window. I mean, it had to be, right? Why else would I, why else would I have a fucking f huge gash in my leg? Why else would a flap of my fucking leg, like the skin, be going like this? Someone told me that. Someone saw me and had to call the campus security to get my ass to the hospital because I was gushing blood. Walking around my dorm, like literally walking on the leg that had just gotten that gash from when I kicked my foot through the window. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? This was an eye-opening experience for me because it made me realize that I was not okay. I was very down bad mentally. Something was not okay where I felt like I needed to drink that much to have a fun time. And it was consistent. I would black out pretty much every weekend. I would drink every single weekend to the point where I didn't remember anything. I'd either be booting in the toilet or I'd be passed out, pissed drunk. And it finally caught up to me. It finally caught up to me. And this was honestly the biggest blessing in my life. Because think about it, I could have ended up dead in a ditch or pass out drunk, drink myself to death. Like, it's scary. It, it, to this day, I barely drink alcohol. I have probably been drunk like, this happened in 2018. It's 2023, it's five years later, and I'm still mentally scarred from it. I still barely like to drink alcohol. This whole year I've drank one time. It's August. I've drank one time, and I had two drinks. So I didn't even get drunk, because I don't want to, I'm scarred. But anyway, that point in my life led me to realize that I was not okay. I ended up seeing the school counselor because they made me go to counseling and I started to ask questions about myself that I've never asked. And you know what? I actually wrote a list in my notes of all the, the shitty feelings that I had been having. I'm gonna read them to you. If I can find this note because, yeah, it's right here. Yeah, so I brought this list to the counselor and I remember writing this out before going to see her because I, I was so nervous to talk to her. I didn't know what to say. So I brought her this list. Here's what I wrote. Feeling tired and having no energy throughout the day. Feeling down slash sad and alone. Feeling anxious and having no self-confidence. Feeling self-conscious and constantly worrying about what other people think of me. Relying on other people for happiness. I broke down crying when I told the counselor these things. Like, broke down crying and she knew immediately that I was not okay. She knew I needed help. And so, for the rest of the year, I was on academic probation. Because, I mean, fuck, I literally put my foot through a window of the school. I was on their hot list. I was on their watch list. Like, if I drank again, they would have kicked me out. So I had to be on my best behavior. So I would literally be made... So I was forced, actually, to go see this counselor. But it was the best thing that could have happened to me because... I started to ask these questions. Why do I feel this way? Why do I feel the need to drink to the point where I'm passed out drunk? Why do I feel the need to smoke weed every day? Why am I doing these things to cope with my pain? And this happened with about like one month left to school. The girl I was with 
saw me for who I was, she was like, what the fuck? Everyone in my dorm was like, what the fuck is wrong with that kid? Because obviously people talk. Stories get out. I felt like I had a target on my back. I'm walking around campus for the last month of school with a big bandage on my leg. It was embarrassing. It really was. But now I'm back at home for the summer and I'm cleaning carpets. That's my summertime job. I had to go see a counselor at home even in order to go back to that same school. They made me see like a drug counselor, but I wasn't taking it seriously at all. I was still just smoking weed every day. Wasn't drinking, but weed was my thing. I would get out of work and smoke and watch TV and play video games. I'd play 2K a lot and watch porn and then wake up, repeat, go to work, smoke, indulge in pleasure, go to bed. Like, what a sad existence. What a sad existence. And all summer, my friends were out drinking and having fun, but I just couldn't. I was scarred. I, and it was great, though. It was, it was great that I got away from the, the party and, and alcohol scene, but I was still doing the, but I was still smoking all the time. And I remember dreading going back to school. Like, the fact that I had to go to counseling just to go back to school, I should have known that I didn't want to go. I really didn't. But the only thing that was holding me back was that girl that I was with. She was my happiness. She was my source of happiness. And I would be able to see her again if I go back to school. I would be able to be back together with her. Everything's going to be great. She's going to be my girlfriend this year. I'm going to make it official with her. Everything's going to be awesome. And later on in that summer, I get a text from her. She's confused. She wants to distance herself from me. It was her way of saying, let's be friends. She friend zoned me. And I was crushed again. Another heartbreak. Again, another heartbreak. And now it's like, I'm numb. I feel empty. I don't feel anything. I clean carpets all day and just listen to music, listen to Juice World and sad music, all the heartbreak songs and just indulge in that sadness all day long. The whole summer, I'd meet up with my friends after work and pretend like I'm okay. Pretend like I'm having a fun time, but really I was just there to smoke weed with them and watch the sunset. It's all we did all summer, smoke weed and watch the sunset. And I had just gone through that second heartbreak in my life. And now it's like I have no reason to go back to school. Because I didn't want to even be there. I didn't want to study whatever I was studying. I didn't care. But how was I supposed to tell people that I wanted to drop out of college? When that my whole life has been, you need to go to college. You need to study this. You need to get a job doing this. You need to do that. How was I going to tell people that I didn't want to go? And of course, I was so depressed. So it's like, how was I supposed to tell anybody that I didn't want to go to school? I didn't want to go back to that place. Especially now because the girl I was like in love with just dumped me, just left me. So now I have no reason to go back. I was numb, but I ended up going back and pretended like everything was fine, pretended like I wasn't super depressed, pretended like I was happy, pretended like I actually cared about school, pretended like I cared about the people I was seeing. But I hit a breaking point. And I remember about a month into school, it had been a whole month of me Pretty much staying in my room all day, binge watching The Office, which is a good show by the way, but hey, I was binge watching it all day every day. I'd wake up and smoke weed. That was the first thing I'd do was smoke weed. Then I'd rip my vape. Then I'd pop my Adderall. Then I'd stay in the room. Then I'd beat my meat when my roommate left to go to class. Oh yeah, like sus ass shit. Because I needed to feel something. Every little pleasure spike I got, that was my only source of like happiness because I was so depressed that I needed to feel something but it got to the point where I felt empty inside I was chasing these pleasures but it was just giving me empty feelings I didn't even enjoy it anymore but like I was saying about a month in I ended up going to a class one of the only classes I went to that whole fucking month and I'm sitting in class I'm super anxious because even just stepping out of my dorm room that year was a hard task for me. That's how anxious I was. That's how depressed I was. I didn't even want to see people. I didn't want to interact with people because of that. I had no confidence. I couldn't look anybody in the eye. I couldn't talk to anybody. But I'm sitting in class in my little bubble in my own world. I got a headphone in because I'm like afraid to talk to people. And 
all of a sudden my heart starts beating really fast. I start profusely sweating. And I'm like wiping my forehead. I'm like, what the fuck? Why am I sweating? Oh, people are gonna see them sweating now. This is bad. What if the teacher calls on me and I have to talk in front of all these people? And I had my first panic attack. That's what it was. I had a panic attack and I literally was like freaking out. I had no idea what was going on. I stood up and I like sped walk out of the class because I didn't want to run because I didn't have the confidence to like embarrass myself or something. I don't know. Some weird shit. But I sped walk out of the class, went back to my dorm room, into my safe space, into my comfort zone. And I just broke down crying. I hit my breaking point. It was time for me to go home. I needed to go home. So I called my parents and I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm packing my shit and I'm driving home. Like I can't be here anymore. I feel sad all the time. I feel depressed. I just let it all out. I'm in tears just telling my mom that I'm depressed, I'm anxious, and I'm tired of being here. I need to come home. And I do. And switching my environment was one of the best things I could have done because if I had stayed there all year, who knows how bad it could have gotten. I was at my breaking point. I needed to go home. And, and uh, this is what I looked like, actually. Yeah. I had these pimples all over my face. My acne was bad. So that definitely contributed to the fact that I was just mentally not confident at all because this was something that I struggled with was that acne that it held me back, it really did. Now, I remember within the first week of me being home, I ended up seeing a doctor. And I told him about my mental health issues and the fact that I was feeling so shitty, sad, depressed, and he prescribed me an antidepressant because that's what doctors do. And instead of, you know, fixing my habits and lifestyle, he turned to prescribing me antidepressants and that, that's what it that's how it is nowadays you get prescribed antidepressants and so yeah I started taking those and I remember the first few days that I was home I was actually off the weed I didn't smoke for like the first five days I was home because I didn't really want to do it in front of my mom and I just wanted to like kind of reset and I felt better and better each day but then on day six like I was starting to feel so much better I should have just quit then and there but of course, the addiction took over, and on day six, I relapsed, and I was back to smoking weed, back to nicotine. And honestly, I wanted to do it. I wanted to go back to that lifestyle, because the antidepressants weren't really working. I still had that ten I still had that feeling of I'm not enough, that feeling of I'm only happy when I'm doing these things, and I didn't really go long enough without it to fully experience the benefits of just being sober and getting my mental health back in check. So I was, I fell back into the smoking and yeah, this is a picture of me. I actually got a job as a pizza delivery driver, which was great because it took the stress off of like being in school. I was no longer stressed out by being in school all the time. And that was like one of the best things for me was just getting rid of that stress. But Obviously, I'm still smoking weed every night. This is me after after work at 12.46 in the morning, smoking weed before I go home. Fuck, can you hear that damn weed whacker? That's starting to piss me off, because I've already recorded this video once, and I'm not trying to record it a third time, so you're gonna have to deal with that sound. I'm sorry, bro. But yeah, more smoking, more smoking. Ah, it was like that five day period where I was off of it. Ugh, should have stayed off it, but that's how addiction is. And at this point in my life, my days consisted of waking up at around noon time because I didn't have to work until like 4 p.m. And then I'd wake up at noon, smoke right away, have my wake and bake, chill for like three hours, then head to work from 4 p.m. to like midnight. I'd be the closing shift, so I'd be driving and delivering pizza all night. I'd be smoking on the job, too. Every, like, pizza delivery I made, I'd pull over, <sighs> quick rip. That's a, just, that's a joint, but I had a bong in the back of my car that I'd literally smoke every single, pretty much every single delivery. Then I'd get out of work, smoke, that's that 1 a.m. look, <laughs> and go home, freaking grind on NBA 2K because that's what I was obsessed with at the time. I was playing NBA 2K, leveling up my guy, maxing out my stats. I was jerking off a lot. 
like a lot because I hadn't been with a girl in a long time. So I was like constantly beating my meat every day. Just uh, had to give you one of those. It's been a while. And yeah, just all winter smoking. This is the end of 2019, okay? And I do remember actually, I met another girl at the end of the year. And yeah, just me being goofy. And like I was making tip money. So I was making like cash. So all that cash was just coming in and being spent on weed. It was like the perfect, I couldn't dream of anything better at that moment in, in my life. But I ended up meeting another girl. Another girl that I could latch on to. Another girl that I could get my source of happiness from. And she had her own mental health issues as well. So the two of us together, we didn't click. It was like a very toxic kind of relationship. And I remember so vividly, there was this one night where I'm getting intimate with her. We're starting to make out. And I remember she's sliding her hand down my pants and I'm like, hmm, okay. But my dick isn't working. There's no blood flow. <laughs> it's soft. It's like a little noodle, little, little, little flappy noodle. And it was so fucking embarrassing. So fucking embarrassing. And I had no idea why I was experiencing that. I was like, literally shook. I'm like, my eyes get wide. I'm like, uh, yeah, we need to stop. I'm sorry. I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening. One of the worst feelings and experiences a man could go through. I'm a young, I was 20, yeah, I was 20 years old at the time. I looked like that, first of all. I looked like shit, but I was 20 years old. My dick should have been working properly. But anyway, another just blessing in disguise. Another kind of lesson that God gave to me because had he not, I never would have discovered no fap. And this is the point in my life where everything changed, where, like literally, me getting with a girl and my dick not working is literally what sparked my self-improvement journey. How funny is that? Because I went home that night and I searched up relentlessly, why won't it work? Why won't my dick get hard? Like literally searching for answers and I stumbled across NoFap. I stumbled across the Reddit forum of NoFap. And it was like, it was speaking to my soul. All the people ex like explaining their experiences, all the people talking about their ED experiences as well. I was like connecting through the screen with these people. I'm like, this makes so much fucking sense. Porn is a problem. I find it clicked for me. I was like, damn, that is crazy. That like, it was, Maybe you've seen a video on NoFap for the first time and you're like confused at first. You're like, what the fuck? But then you listen to the guy and you're like, yo, he makes sense. That's what happened to me too. I would start finding these YouTubers who were talking about NoFap and it was like, fuck man, I gotta do this. And so I did. I got on NoFap. Semen retention actually because I needed to just focus on myself. I didn't want to go through another experience where I was trying to get intimate with a girl and have my dick not work again because I was traumatizing. So I literally was like, fuck it. I'm going to go on semen retention. I'm not going to speak to girls. I'm not going to try to get with girls. And that was that. And obviously I've relapsed a few times, not with women though, but with the hub down bad with the hub. And finally though, I got on a long streak, but I was still smoking weed. I was still smoking weed. And this was 420 actually of 2020. So <sighs> Schmovid was going on. We were in lockdown, sort of. And I knew about NoFap at this point. I was actually starting to experience some benefits from it. Like I'm starting to look a little better too. I don't know if you can tell, but like I look a little better. I'm looking healthier. I'm not busting nuts all the time. I'm actually getting on this long streak of NoFap. And things were starting to look up in my life. I was actually starting to rewire my brain the, the dopamine spikes that I was getting from, from porn were no longer in my life. So it was like, I was getting more pleasure from everyday life, but I was still smoking weed. I was still hanging out with friends who just weren't serving me. And I didn't really hit the gym at all. 
I was just on NoFap. Like, you can't just be on NoFap and not do anything else with your life. But I made that mistake in the beginning. Um, but then, another turning point for me was in May of 2020, I got a new job. I quit my Domino's job, and I got a new job working in a factory, in this big facility, a FedEx ground facility, where you can kind of see, I, I took a picture of this because there's a basketball hoop. I made a, I made a basketball hoop out of cardboard and tape, but I should have, this is the only picture I have from this facility. I should have taken a better picture where you can kind of see the trucks and you can kind of see the belt at the bottom where the boxes would come down and I would load those boxes into these trucks. It was like a physical demanding job underneath these fluorescent lights. And the crazy thing about this is it would be a 2 a.m. shift. It was like the graveyard night shift. So I'd go in at 2 a.m. and I'd get out of work at 10 a.m. And the reason this was a turning point for me is because I no longer was able to hang out with people. I had to go to bed at like 6 p.m. at night to get my eight hours in. So my lifestyle completely changed when I started working here and it changed for the better. I no longer was going out late on weekends and, and hanging out with shitty friends. No, it was time to lock in. And this is where my self-development journey skyrocketed, okay? It had been like a few months on semen retention. So I'm like 90 days in, I'm, I'm feeling so good. But I keep having these like intuition moments where I know deep down, every, like every time I smoked, I would overthink and be like, I gotta quit, I gotta quit, I gotta quit. What am I doing? Like my higher self was literally calling down to me. God was calling down to me saying, you need to quit. And at this time, I had sort of like a spiritual awakening. Like, ooh, 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 it sounds like crazy and shit, but I got closer to God. I had never been close to God in my life. I didn't grow up religious at all. I didn't go to church. I didn't think about God. I just thought I was drifting through life. Everything's, it is what it is. I didn't think about him at all. But after this long streak on semen retention, the first one I ever did, I started feeling like these intuition moments of like God sending me messages. I'm not even fucking with you. It sounds woo woo, but like if you are, if you have faith and you're a believer, you know what I mean. Like I had an awakening. I really did. And I knew what I needed to do. I knew I needed to quit my addictions. I had already quit porn, so I knew I could do it. It was like... I was pushed to become better because of the fact that I was on semen retention. It like forced me to become a better person. Semen retention was the catalyst to my self-improvement journey. And so I finally quit weed. I finally listened to my higher self, listened to God. And I threw all my shit in a dumpster. Straight up. My bong, my weed, my pipes, whatever I had. My lighters. And just fucking dumpstered that shit. And suffered for a few weeks. But that is when my self-development skyrocketed. My mental health started becoming the best it had ever been. I was no longer reliant on weed for happiness. I started to feel the most self-love that I had ever felt in my entire life. I stopped playing video games. I was watching a bunch of creators at the time. I, I need to mention this. Um, Jordan Green, Ice Cold JT, Casey Zander, Von Two Cut. So throwback to those guys back in 2020, shout out to all of them. They were the creators I was watching in the beginning of 2020 who like opened my eyes to no fap, opened my eyes to self-improvement in general. And I started implementing the things they were saying. Like I remember watching a Jordan Green and Ice Cold JT video and it was like, get off social media. So I deleted my social media and I became so happy because of it. It was like a freeing experience. I have videos on my channel about social media and I'm going to make more about why I deleted it and stuff like that. But I was implementing the things in, in my life. And Casey Zander was a big reason why I got into the gym. Big reason why I got into the gym. And I almost forgot to fucking mention that. That is the best part of my self-improvement journey in the beginning was the fact that I committed to lifting weights. I had that spiritual awakening, right? Where I was now living in accordance with God. I knew what I needed to do to become a better man. So I started to hit the gym. I stayed on NoFap. I deleted my social media. I started reading books. All while working at FedEx. All while working these graveyard shifts. And I was basically going lone wolf. I didn't hang out with people. I didn't see people. I had a lone wolf phase in my life. And I became the happiest I'd ever been in my life. 
I remember this is the picture where I literally was like, yo, mom, you got to take a picture of me because I'm like all excited. And I've been on NoFap for a little while. This is now what I look like uh, in 2020. And I was like, I had been on NoFap. So I'm like, mom, you got to take a picture of me. I want to see if I have the glow. The glow. I didn't. I still look kind of dusty. But anyway, hitting the gym. Hitting the gym. Transmuting the energy I now had from semen retention. And this is one of the first progress pictures I ever took. Back in July of 2020, my legs are pretty skinny. My arms looking pretty juicy. I probably just hit arms that day. So I'm like, I have that pump. But yeah, I'm so grateful for my younger self for committing to the gym. The best thing I could have done. And at this point, it's like I'm fully invested in delaying gratification. I'm saving my money from the job I'm in. I'm putting myself through pain every day. I stopped the instant gratification crap, the video games, the social media, the junk food. I fixed my diet. I stopped watching porn, that's a big one, but I had been on semen retention for a while. And oh yeah, I remember this screenshot I had on my phone, eliminate everything that doesn't help you evolve. So that's why I got rid of the social media, that's why I got rid of the weed and the porn and the nicotine. Like, I was just on a pursuit of chasing my highest self, my best self. I wanted to become the best version of myself. I was tired of girls leaving me. I was tired of, well, having ED problems. Like that was so traumatic. And so I had this motivation to just become the best version of myself. I don't know where it came from, but finding NoFap was the starting point. Hitting the gym was the next thing I did. So now this is another progress picture. I was starting to delay gratification. I was starting to put myself through uncomfortable situations. And just the fact that I was now waking up at 1.30 in the morning, two in the morning to get to work, I was like, my discipline was leveling up like crazy because I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to wake up in the middle of the night, but I did it anyway. I stopped listening to my feelings. I started watching more videos on YouTube about why you shouldn't be so emotional as a man. And I started to learn about what a healthy relationship should look like. And I, and I realized all the mistakes I was making. I realized I was a simp. I was a little bitch. And just all through 2020, my focus was on bettering myself, bettering my life. And I ended up actually going back to school, but I didn't go to um, a school away from home. I stayed at home and did online school. So that made it way better. It was, it was much easier to do online school. I didn't get caught up in the partying and, and interacting with people I didn't care about. No, I was still locked in on myself doing my fitness journey. This is me after like a few months or so of, of self-improvement. I'm starting to look better. My face is starting to be like more masculine looking. I'm, I'm squaring out my jaw. I look healthier. I look happier. I do. Because I was. I was loving my daily routine. It would start in the morning. I'd wake up at 1.30 in the morning, go to work. At 10 a.m. I'd get out of work and I'd immediately hit the gym immediately hit the gym and while I'm working out I was watching like self-improvement content watching ice cold JT and I hadn't even found Hamza yet by the way I didn't find Hamza until 2021 when I had already made so much progress obviously he's like the fucking biggest self-improvement youtuber but I didn't find him until 2021 and I think he started in 2020 but I was watching like ice cold JT Jordan Green Casey Zander like I said and Von Tu Cut he's a he's a funny guy oh yeah and like Bro, I started tracking my workouts. Like every single workout I would write down. I was going crazy. I had the discipline. My mental health was great. And yeah, it's just like I'm getting stronger and stronger. This is like all my progress pictures. And this is where I'm starting to look good, right? Like my legs have gotten bigger. My shoulders are bigger. My arms are bigger. My chest is getting bigger. And I was just happy, man. I was just so happy with my life. Like everything was starting to click. I'm, I've been on semen retention for months now. I went a solid 10 months on semen retention and I was loving every single day of it. K like crushing the online school, making a lot of money at that job. because got, I got paid very well for doing that job because it was the middle of the night. Nobody wanted to work that, that shift, so they had to pay us well. I was getting paid very well. I was working out consistently, as you can see. Dialed in my diet, so I got bigger and stronger. I'm starting to look more attractive. My face looks better. The first couple books I read, I actually remember, I bought some self-improvement books. The first book I read was Outwitting the Devil. Had a huge impact on my life. It was right around the time where I like had the spiritual awakening and like right around the time where I started to believe in God and I had faith in Him and faith that everything was gonna work out in my life. 
And so reading that Outwitting the Devil book was eye-opening. Then I read the book The Way of the Superior Man. And that book changed my life forever. It, real, it made me realize what masculine and feminine energy is. It made me realize that every single relationship I had in the past was shit. And that I was the feminine little pussy version of myself that got walked over by women. And they didn't respect me because of that. Like, because I was the feminine pole. And so reading that book was another, like, life-changing book. So... Yeah, and then, oh, I forgot to mention, I started meditating every day. Like, my routine was so dialed in. It was work, workout, take a cold shower after my workout, then I'd meditate for, like, 5 to 10 minutes, then I'd read, like, 10 to 20 pages of my book, and then I'd do my online school, and then I'd eat, and then I'd go to bed. And I was so happy. I was so, so happy living that routine. Never, never really saw friends during this time. For 10 months, I was by myself during lockdown, during COVID, so... It was a perfect time to just focus on myself and dial it in and be better and become the best version of myself. And this is about a year into training. I'm looking real juicy now. And after 10 months of semen retention, I meet this lovely, beautiful girl. And we're still together to this day. And I'm not even gonna lie to you, God sent me this woman. There's a reason why she came to it came into my life and it's, to be my wife. And she was on her own path at the time. She was dealing with her own kind of addictions. She had weed, she was addicted to weed, nicotine, just like I was, but she was now on her upward trajectory as well. She was striving to be her best self. So we were both on our mission of becoming our best version of ourselves. And we met at the top. And yeah, it's been a beautiful experience. Holy shit. Do not relapse because of this picture, brother. Why did I put this in here? <laughs> okay. But, oh, Matt's a simp. He's kissing his girlfriend. He's such a simp. Shut the fuck up, bro. People are always, like, commenting on my on my videos, like, oh, this guy's a simp. Like, that, that one video where it's me and her in the thumbnail. Everything is, or no, uh, she's waiting for you, bro. There's so much hate on that video. People have, like, given up on the the true nature of like masculine and feminine energy coming together. They've given up on traditional relationships when bro, there's, there's traditional women still out there. You're just fucking brainwashed by the internet to think that there's no good girls left. Like you're retarded. Stop watching those podcasts where they just like sit there and they get a bunch of girls who like show off their boobies and like complain about modern dating. It's like, bro, get off the internet and you'll find a real woman. Get like, prioritize yourself. I went 10 months and locked into myself, didn't care about seeing girls. I didn't even expect to meet a girl, but God sent her to me. And she's a traditional woman. I'm now playing that masculine role. She's the feminine role. We came together and it's a beautiful relationship. I'm gonna be, to I'm gonna be talking more about it. I'm gonna be sharing lessons I've learned from being in a relationship, how to handle a woman, so to speak how to handle the waves of emotions from a feminine woman, all that stuff. And yeah, you'll meet her eventually, bro. I'm gonna probably do a Q&A video where we answer questions together and that'll be a funny like introduction to her. But yeah, it's like all these guys on the internet are just so lost. They, they're they just like, they women are the problem. It's like, bro, no, you're the fucking problem. We're the men, we're supposed to lead women in the right way, so. Ah, I could go on and on about the whole modern dating hookup culture fiasco, all this red pill bullshit that's now like brainwashing young kids to think that they have to be toxic in order to attract a woman. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. But anyway, that was kind of like the reward for me focusing on myself for like 10 months straight, being on semen retention, working consistently, making money, going through school. And, and actually crushing it for the first time in my life, reading books, meditating, taking cold showers. I became a disciplined, strong, more masculine version of myself. And I loved it. I was obsessed with self-improvement and I still am. That's why I'm speaking about self-improvement now and that's why I've made this channel. But as you can see, after meeting her, oh yeah, I'm still hitting the gym. It's purpose over, it's purpose over your woman. Oh yeah, I'm still hitting the gym. I'm still relentlessly pursuing greatness in all areas of my life. And yeah, I'm, I'm building my body, building my body. I graduated from college while with her 
and ended up getting a job as a, an electrician. So I was working a construction job and I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't like it at all. I remember actually talking to my girl one day and telling her and sharing with her that I wanted to do YouTube. YouTube was what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to get on camera, speak to young men, help them improve themselves, open their eyes, just like other creators did for me. But there was always this fear of judgment that I felt. What if this person finds my channel? What if my parents don't approve? What about this, this, and that? And it's like, she was the only one that truly knew my, my goals and my dream to be on YouTube. So I was working, I was working a job I didn't like, and, but I was still hitting the gym, still doing my self-improvement, working as an electrician. This is my body. And yeah, I'm just grinding. Like, even though I didn't want to do that job, I still woke up and got my ass to work. On my breaks, I was reading books about online marketing. I was reading books about business. I was reading books about mindset. And every day I'd wake up and think, why don't I just start a YouTube channel? Why don't I just quit my job and start a YouTube channel? It took me like fucking six months though to finally quit though and like go all in on YouTube. And this is what I look like now. That's one of my thumbnails. But anyway, I remember literally like waking up sleep deprived every day, getting to my construction job, hating every moment of it because I was with a bunch of like, I like literally looked around and saw a bunch of middle-aged fat men still working the same job. And I was like, fuck me. I do not want to end up like them. And this is not to throw shade at construction guys. I have mad respect for you if you're in the construction or if you're in any trade at all. It's not easy work. It is hard work. Working with your hands, manual labor, that is hard work. I have a lot of respect for you. But the guys I was working with were bums. They were alcoholics. So I hated it. I hated every minute of it. And I had this calling. I had this intuition just fucking like itching at me every day that I needed to get on YouTube. I needed to start a channel. And so I did. I finally said, fuck it. I saved up enough money, moved back home with my mother and, and got on YouTube. And it was the best fucking decision I could have made. This was back when I had 43 subscribers. Like, bro, this is crazy. I had a different profile picture back then. Like, best decision I could have made. I saved up money, so I was able to not make a lot of money because your first, like, fucking six months on YouTube, you won't make a cent. You have to go through those struggles of being awkward on camera. If you watch some of my first videos, I was so awkward, but I had that calling to do it. I knew that I wanted to do it. I knew deep down I need to get on camera. I knew deep down I'm gonna help a lot of young men out there. I knew that I wasn't living in accordance with my purpose. I knew my purpose was to get on camera and to help young men. And for the longest time I made excuses. Oh, but I just need to finish school. I need to work that job because other people will think I'm better if I do that. But if I get on YouTube, they'll think I'm crazy. But it's like I, I was neglecting the fact that I, in my heart of hearts, knew that I wanted to do this. But it was always excuses. I was waiting for the perfect time, right? Oh, once I'm done grad, once I'm done with school. But then once I was done with school, I had to work this full-time job and I never had time to even make videos. Waiting for the perfect time. There's no perfect time. You just have to start. You have to just fully commit. You have to take the leap of faith. And so I did. And I had 43 subscribers after like a month or two of posting, but that's the nature of the game. It takes a while to grow on YouTube. But I just kept showing up. I kept making videos. I kept getting better on camera. And I'm not done. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. This is my channel banner. It's been my channel banner since the fucking start. This is a brotherhood. I'm building a brotherhood. And I am so fucking grateful that I decided to start this channel. I'm so fucking grateful for you, especially if you've watched this far into the video. If you've watched this far into the video, comment below, brotherhood with a heart emoji. My brother, thank you. I took the leap of faith, man. And guess what? My self-improvement is only just beginning. I've made tremendous progress. I've built the body. I've attracted the wife quality woman that I want into my life. I've leveled up my knowledge. My mental health is amazing. 
I love my life. I love myself. I've done over 5,000 minutes of meditation. But this is only the beginning. I have so much more progress to make. And that is the beauty of self-improvement. Is it's a constant, constant chase to become your best version. It is a constant chase of self-mastery. Not even self-improvement. You are chasing self-mastery. That is what I am chasing. And that's what this channel is for. Is for you to become the best version of yourself. For you to master yourself. And for you to one day maybe make your own YouTube channel. And start changing other people's lives as well. And creating your own brotherhood. That's what I want for you. I'm a normal guy. I've now grown this channel to over 18,000 subscribers. And I'm fucking so grateful for every one of you. I don't even know, I don't even know what to say. I'm so overwhelmed by it. My goal was to get 1,000 subs by the end of the year. I'm at 18K. I'm a normal guy. But I fully committed to self-improvement. I fully committed to changing my life. And it's taken me to this point right now where I'm sharing this wisdom. I hope you got some value from this video. I hope you're able to relate to some of my stories. And yeah, we're back to the start. Back to the beginning. This is just the beginning, like I just said. I'm grateful for you, brother. Like the video if you want. Leave a comment. Comment the word brotherhood with a heart or comment whatever you want. It's, uh, it's up to you. But yeah, I think I got everything. That's uh, been my entire self-improvement journey. Basically gave you a life story. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Peace.